Recht herzlichen guten Morgen, meine Damen und Herren, hier wieder auf dem roten Sofa der DVZ. Ich freue mich, dass heute Morgen mein Gast hier auf dem roten Sofa, Frau Marie-Christine Lombard, ist. Sie ist CEO seit 2012 bei Geodies. Und ähm, ich werde jetzt mal ins Englische wechseln, damit mich Frau Lombard auch versteht. So, I'm gonna switch into English. Um, nice that you are here in the red sofa, uh, Marie-Christine Lombard. Um, you joined Geodies as CEO in October 2012. And um, so Geodis is a logistics subsidiary of um, French rail company, SNCF. Is it, so that is uh, a state-owned enterprise. Is it a pro or a con for you? Well, first of all, uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's definitely a pro. And actually, this is why I joined Geodis in 2012, because of the shoulder structure. So why is that a pro? Because SNCF is a well-known company in France, uh, known for its uh, state-of-the-art engineering background with a TGV, a lot of engineers having been able to uh, actually construct what is uh, renowned worldwide, I would say. And for Geodis, coming back to that, of course, it's a long-term shareholder. So you can build long-term strategy with such a shareholder. Very supportive financially and also supportive, I would say, on, on the engineering side. Yeah, we're going to talk about strategy. Um, you want to double the operating profit till 2018, you said in the end of last year. Uh, what are your plans to reach this goal? Well, obviously, um, it's, uh, there's a lot of dimension to the plan. We are involved in five different lines of business, so uh, freight forwarding, distribution and express, road transport, contract logistics, and supply chain optimization. So this plan is basically a mix of volume growth, especially on the freight forwarding, contract logistics side of things, because that's where we see the international footprint of Geodis present in 67 countries and managing uh, 150,000 clients. Mm -hmm. So we see above market growth in these businesses and a mix of uh, so revenue quality and volume plus productivity on the cost side because uh, we have spent a lot of time in the past years to build uh, best-in-class systems for the business that will enforce uh, productivity. So once you grow the volumes, of course, Uh, and then uh, you are able to get more productivity thanks to the technology, then you double your operating margin. Of course, it's not as simple as that. There's a lot of work behind, a lot mm. of engagement of the, of the people in the company to do that. You come from France, your headquarters is located there. What role does the German market play? Okay, in France, we are a leader by far. And in Germany, we are significant, but obviously, there's still a lot of growth potential in Germany for us. We actually refer to Germany as a second home market to Geodis. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of potential we see on the road transport, a lo lot of potential on the freight forwarding side, on contract logistics and on supply chain optimization. And it's a matter, I think, of being better known in the German market for what we do for the mm -hmm. clients. It, to be better known, you do a rebranding uh, in the moment. Can you tell us something about that? Yes. Well, it's, it's not exactly a rebranding because Geodis, the Geodis brand exists since 1995. Mm. It's, uh, it's more a converging to one brand because the group that uh, I manage had actually over 40 brands. So we decided uh, actually at the beginning of the year to go for one brand and to convert all the existing brands into Geodis. That was one part. Then the second part was also to update the Geodis logo and, uh, and make it more uh, visible in the market mm -hmm. with that strap line that we chose very targeted to the customers. We logistic your growth, meaning that with, you, with us, mm -hmm. we will help you to develop your business throughout the world with our uh, capabilities. And then, of course, um, it's about advertising. So we have devoted some budget uh, to be more visible in the media, mm. uh, especially in Germany. So France, Germany, Poland, China, and the USA are our targeted markets to actually advertise 
not massively because then uh, mm. the budgets are huge, but intelligently, uh, this brand actually. Mm. Okay, besides branding and advertising and uh, organic growth, you mentioned, um, do you have any plans concerning major mergers and acquisitions in Europe? Okay, in Europe, we believe that we have huge potential to grow organically. However, uh, in the M&A side, we are targeting the USA. We believe that uh, in the USA, we are present, of course, and uh, with major customers and uh, major blue chip companies, uh, American blue chip companies. But we believe that we need to further invest in that market. And there are a lot of companies that are coming into uh, the market owned by private equity that are you know, looking to, uh, to either IPO those companies or uh, sell it to strategic buyers. So we are indeed very much looking into that market for growth through acquisitions. We talked about your plans to rise the operating profit and uh, this are amb ambition targets uh, like that. You mean that you have to come better and even more better. So you also have to account for special effort to motivate your employees. How do you manage that? Well, uh, first of all, we started with uh, two years ago with uh, the executive board to set uh, the ambitious goal that we just talked about. So uh, growing the business and uh, improving the profit, but also coming back from what is GOD standing for. So we started with mission, vision, values uh, work where we involved about uh, 2,000 people of the company to basically tell us what do you feel GOD should stand for. And the mm. mission came out being we help our clients to succeed by overcoming logistical constraints. And that mission actually uh, helped, you know, opening the minds of everybody saying, okay, we are part of a big group, 7 billion euros, uh, supported by a major shareholder, long-term investor in this business. And we have 150,000 clients who are coming from different lines of business. But at the end, we have the same goal, which is to help the customer succeed. And that was quite a driver into saying, okay, let's build this group around this strong brand and engage everybody. So I went through roadshows, internal roadshows, to explain the new Geodis and what everybody's uh, purpose was to build that brand and that new group. Regarding motivation, you also have a very personal experience. So uh, you, uh, after 11 years in banking sector in USA and uh, France, you joined Jet Services in 1993 as chief financial officer. And the founder of this French transport company told you, first of all, to work in the logistic. Um, so, for instance, in warehouses uh, and uh, in, in transport and so on. So to understand the business better, was it a torture for you or did you benefit from this experience? Well, it was not a torture. First of all, I have to say it could seem a little bit strange going from banking to transport, but this was a choice. Yeah. It was a, a real choice of myself that says, okay, I want to go into that sector because it's dynamic, it's energetic. You are close to the customers. You have to engage people. So that's what attracted me into that sector. And then I indeed meet, met that founder of Jet Services. And I owe him a lot because he did tell me, yes, indeed, you are being hired as a finance director, but you're not going to do finance for at least six months. Mm -hmm. You're going to go into the depots, uh, do pickup and deliveries, uh, take Lionel trucks, uh, take planes to see what is the process behind what we sell. And I have to say, this was a high opener for me. Mm -hmm. Not only a high opener to understand the business in great details, but also I saw all the involvement of everybody, you know, to, to make the customers happy, what the customers are entrusting us with, which is the most valuable thing they have, which mm -hmm. is their business. So for me, that was quite an important uh, time. And I have to say, I almost regret do, do, it now. Do you do uh, similar things to your employees? Well, uh, yes, we do. We have induction really? programs. No, we have induction programs in the lines of business where people go in depots to see how the business is being done. That's yeah. for sure. And I have to say, uh, I, yeah, the people, the functional people that I hire, 
that are new, therefore, to GeoDIS, I send them to the field systematically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another interesting thing, uh, thing you said uh, is that many, many people think globalization makes things easier. You are of the opposite opinion. You say globalization makes a lot of things more complicated. What's the reason being for that? Well, it's not just me saying that. It's the customers that I meet uh, very regularly that says, well, you know, globalization has opened huge opportunities, of course, to trade, which is a fact because international trade flows are growing 6% per year. Yeah. So indeed, that's good. That's good for the business. But at the same time, uh, it's very complex to manage this supply chain because many components of the products that our clients are selling are made in different countries and then you have to organize the flows. So multiplication of flows and it's not like the world has becoming easier in terms of customs clearance, uh, export controls and the rest of it. So the customers are telling us and we agree with that because we see what's happening that the supply chain has greatly complexified over the, ten, the past 10 years. Another thing which is important is the demand volatility. And the demand volatility is linked to the economic cycles and the, uh, I would say, uh, volatility of the economies, but also the internet, e-commerce. Yeah. You have six billion people on earth that can order stuff every hours of the day and night, and you never know how much volumes mm -hmm. you need to produce when, where, and therefore, the chain is complexifying. Mm. So Wh the clients are mm. in need of a logistics company that understand that complexity and actually ease the process for them. That's what we believe. Okay, maybe digitalization can make things easier. So, and digitalization uh, is uh, really very often discussed here on the fair. Um, digitalization, disruptive business. How do you handle this in your company? Well, we believe that digitalization is definitely a mega trend. And it's not new for a business involved in distribution because digitalization was already, uh, I would say, uh, starting with the track and trace system. Mm. That was a digitalization already there. But nowadays, it's all about real time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but track and trace is real time. So you have not drivers <laughs> with not always, but we try. And, and it's definitely becoming that way. So we have uh, in our distribution business, our uh, drivers, and I think most competitors have that also, uh, in-cap system that gives uh, the position of the trucks, uh, of the vehicles, uh, the, the volumes that have been delivered, the, at what time they have been delivered, at what time they've been received by the receiver, and so on and so forth. So that part of the digitalization, I think, is now a no-brainer. Everybody mm. is coming to that norm, I would say. The new thing, I think, in digitalization is how you are going to handle all the data that yeah. we have. Is data the asset of the future? I, yes, definitely, I think it is. Well, it, it is already for our business, but mm. that's how we conduct the day-to-day -day business. But intelligent data, uh, can you sell data? Can you structure yeah. data from the transport that you handle? Then can you... Can you take the essence of what does uh, the data you are managing uh, give as indication on consumption yeah. behaviors how and can so you on? How can you evolve new business models? Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what we are looking into. We have specific innovation projects that we are managing at the center involving mm. internal people, clients and partners, where we are actually thinking through what can be new business models that evolve That, that come out with this kind of mega trends. Can you imagine more collaboration with partners, maybe also with competitors, using data as a new asset and um, making with, new business yeah, models? With competitors, is, I think it's difficult, but with, uh, with partners, for sure. I mean, with other, other industries, for instance. With other industries, we do already. I mean, with our clients, we are very much in a collaborative mm. mode, so we exchange data, of course. But I think uh, with uh, the IT sector, of course, we are already partner uh, of major IT uh, companies in many ways because we are a client of theirs mm. and they are a client of us uh, in terms of logistics. So this kind of partnership will, uh, will get, I think, stronger going forward because you cannot buy all these mega systems. Yeah. You have to uh, outsource part of it. Mm. Okay, very interesting things you say here on the red sofa. Um, Jean-Marie Lombard, 
thank you very much for being here uh, at the DBZ stand. We will um, pursue the development of GODs and digitalization and so on. And thank you one more time and have a nice time here on the fair. Good luck and uh, a lot of success. Thanks. Thank you very much.